Visiting schools throughout the country for his recent report, Sir Peter Williams observed much existing good practice in mathematics. However, his review does identify some key areas where maths learning could be significantly improved. One school that particularly impressed Sir Peter is the inappropriately named Week Primary in Winchester. So what are they doing at Week to strengthen their maths teaching? What are they doing to make maths real? I think here, where we're more successful, we do get the child right at the heart of the learning and, and children can see that the teacher knows them well. They've taken the time and the trouble to A, find out what their interests are, but then to put that into planning. And that takes time and effort. And children appreciate that. They realise that their own interests are being used to help with their learning. So that relationship between the children and the teacher is what makes a success. OK, so hands ready. So we go down. What I always try and do is start off the lesson with a warm-up exercise, some sort of breathing, some sort of active Big standing breath. up, clapping, anything really to just get the children on the ball. Um, then we tend to do a song, um, anything that has sort of counting in it really, that the children can get up and enjoy singing. And then before I actually start the main input of whatever the lesson is going to be, I will do some sort of number work. Can you show me two? Two. Okay, show me seven. Seven. Good girl. The most important Thanks. thing is that the children have fun, they look forward to coming to their lessons, Nine. they're energetic, and they are learning through their actions. And ten. Well done, well done. How many spots on this side? Can you show me? How many spots on this side of Bill the ladybird? Show me, what do we do, Sam? I don't want them to get to Key Stage 2 and say that they hate maths. I want them to get to Key Stage 2 and really love it and understand it. How many? Show me. There's ten. So should we show how we do that as a number bond? We say zero and ten equals ten. I devised these symbols at the beginning of the year um, alongside the children. Um, to make it the maths more personal to them so that they have um, ownership of their mathematical learning and I think it's really worked quite well. What is an equal sign? Equals, Sam. I didn't know when I devised them how well it would go down if they would actually remember it or not, but they have and they've really taken it on board and now when we're doing any addition they use those symbols as well and it really enforces the point. And nine, nine equals Brilliant. They actually get to get up and use their bodies and they have to, they're always having to think ahead, which is key in maths. They're not just, it's not remember. that they've learnt it by rote, because they have to remember those symbols and where they're going to put them. Zoe, how many spots on this side? Two. Who can tell me? What Sir Peter particularly liked was the culture. Uh, he liked the fact that fun and enjoyment and confidence underpinned what we do in maths. The teachers have to be relaxed and confident and they have to have fun teaching the subject. Just going to wait for everyone to have the right sausages up. <coughs> Three... And... Seven... Equals... Ten! There are more smiles across the corridor where Jane is teaching a mixed year three and four class. Numbers in the column. Numbers in the column. Two lines. Two lines. Two lines. Two lines. Add. Add. Add the right. Add the right. Add the left. Add the left. Boing tens over. Boing tens over. Boing hundreds over. Boing hundreds over. Put it under. Put it under. I want the children to learn without knowing that they're actually learning so I think if you make the lesson really fun and enjoyable they forget that they're learning and they just do it without thinking. George! Now using our wrap what's the next thing we've got to do? Two lines, two lines! Two lines, two lines! Let's put two lines, two lines in. 
The success criteria we developed together as a class and um, we looked at column addition and then we wrote lists on a step-by-step -step guide on how to achieve that. Add the right, then add the left. That's to tell you like First of all, you add the units, which is like... Once we've done that, we've simplified it, and then the children um, created their own actions and their own rap to go with it. Boing turns over, um, because you have to um, put the ten. And if they've got a little routine or a little rap, then it can help them work out what the next step is and just sort of make it a bit easier for them to get through their work rather than panic, I think. Welcome to... Maples, Pizza, Palace. I do try and put a lot of drama into lessons because I think it makes it more exciting for the children and it helps them to get into a different mindset. And I think that's part of my job, to, to make them enjoy what they're doing and to show them to model how to enjoy something and how to have fun, I think is a really important thing for a teacher to do. People learn best, children and adults, when they can see the point of what they're learning. And so when they go out in the evening on a Saturday and they buy their pizza, so the children can see that maths is actually part and parcel of real life, something that Sir Peter Williams highlighted in his report. It's very crucial. Here's your menu, sir. Oh, thank you. I'll give you a few minutes to order. Years three and four have turned their classroom into a pizza restaurant. It will give them some real-life experience of using decimals. Which ones? No, um, you want to just bacon, bacon. Uh, two pound fifty. Thank you. I think I have a ham and pineapple pizza, please. £5.64, please. This is a special lesson, and it's unrealistic to try and do something like this every day for preparing resources and, and for making and getting it organised. But it, you need to treat the children to a really fun lesson like this every week, I would say. The teacher's enthusiasm for maths seems boundless and infectious. So how has the school engendered such a positive attitude to maths and, in doing so, raised their attainment? Professional development for staff is a key principle and it will always have budget priority in the school. So teachers know that their own development and training is really valued highly. That has got to be a, a key principle. I've never been particularly confident with maths. Um, it, it does scare me sometimes. I didn't understand those key concepts from a very early age, so as I went on through school, it be maths became more and more challenging. The idea is, is definitely to have a specialist in school, then to have succession management in place, where you've got one or ideally more than one person who can carry on flying that flag. Teaching assistants are a huge part of the success of the school. Their professional development is highly valued and at time will always be dedicated to that. The biggest barrier is, is still, for me, culturally, a fear of maths. It's a fear of getting it wrong. <laughs> to address this fear and to help prevent children struggling with maths, the school has started a booster group with a difference, the Pink Diamond Club. Pink diamonds are the best! Brilliant. OK, now in maths this week, we're going to be doing problem solving. Booster groups are where we identify the children within the class who might need help with strategies and we teach it to them before the lesson. How do you solve a problem like Lottie with all these words? We're going to know exactly what to do. So shall we just read it through? Tilly. Lottie, Miss Mosley's dog, wants to go and see 101 Dalmatians. The advantages that we find of having a booster group are that we can take the children who are, are, are afraid of maths, and not really very confident with it, we take them out before the lesson. She has £22 to spend. They then learn the strategies that they're not really very confident with, come back as the experts, and off we go. This year, it just so happened in, in the group, there were no boys who we felt needed this extra booster group. Um, but in previous years, we have had boys. And the girls in this, this year group pick pink themselves. That's what motivates them. And we have a little, uh, um, our nice little pink highlighter. So we're very 
We like pink, all of us. With this particular group, they've really engaged with the fact that their own interests can be used and, and make the mass more meaningful in real life. We are brilliant problem solvers! Year six are going on a maths treasure hunt. It's supposed to be outdoors, but the Winchester weather has other ideas. However, it doesn't seem to have dampened anyone's enthusiasm. I love a lovely bunch of coconuts to have a banana. Where are their bananas? The whole aim of the treasure hunt was to get the children to think about problem solving as a step-by-step -step process. And he loves adventures. They go and find a clue as to where the problem is, is hiding. They then go and find the problem, which is hidden in a, an envelope, and that's got differentiated clues in it, different colour colours according to the groups. Tyler loves go-go's. He has managed to collect 625, so he is rapidly running out of space to keep them in his bedroom. Polly loves cake. When she came home from school, she was so hungry she dived into the cake cupboard and started eating. How much cake had Eleanor eaten in total? They then work in their pairs to answer the question. Once they've answered the question, they come back and check it with the teacher. OK, Tyler, so we need to work out. You have 625 little go-go's. Yeah. And we need to work out how many boxes. And you need to tell me how you got that answer, OK? So how are we going to do that? OK, so you've got the answer to this one? Yeah. Right, 157 remained as six. We've got very good mathematicians in this group who still make very simple mistakes because they don't read problems or analyse and apply problems properly. So by doing an active treasure hunt, it was good fun. They could concentrate on the questions and try and really think about it in pairs as to what the question was they were going to answer. Have you ever heard of a remainder six of a ticket? <laughs> I think it's more interesting than just sitting at a table with a pen and paper because I think you take things in easier as well. The best quote I can give you is when I'd done one of these activities and I heard one of the, the boys in my class turn to his friend and say, hey, it's great, this, we haven't done any maths at all today. So they, they look on it as, as just fun. They don't actually see it's maths and I think that's where, why it's so important just trying to get them to do maths, but in a real-life situation. You got that one. Right! Yay! <laughs> well done, congratulations. They That's want good. to see you having fun, they want to see you enjoying yourself, so they can feed off that enthusiasm. They love maths, they love doing maths, they get so excited, they want to show off about how brilliant they are at maths. Children are building up the skills for life, um, and they're having some fun along the way. And if you can do both, then you've got success.